President. Senator Birmingham. Thanks, Mr. Acting Deputy President, and uh, and now, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, it is uh, the end of what has been an extraordinary parliamentary year. Uh, it has been uh, the most challenging of years that uh, that I can certainly recall in my time in this place, uh, and we have seen many things occur uh, over those 14 and a half years. Uh, it's a time where individuals working in this building and those who have worked in this building have been challenged uh, perhaps more at any other time and have challenged us, and rightly so. I want to begin my remarks tonight by acknowledging survivors of bullying, sexual harassment and sexual assault and abuse um, through this parliament, uh, through parliamentary workplaces and right across the country. It's a year in which uh, their heroic voices have been heard, uh, in which uh, changes and actions have been taken uh, that are so necessary to occur, uh, and in which uh, I trust and hope that all have learned to listen a little harder, think a little more, and ultimately ensure their behaviour meets appropriate standards. Yesterday, when I addressed coalition staff, uh, I said to them that they should all show respect and expect respect. And that is something that we should all take out of this year as we move forward in terms of the lessons from this year and ensure that all act in such a way. It's a year where the country has continued to be challenged not just by distressing stories uh, but also uh, by the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. We started this year, I think, with great optimism uh, prior to uh, the Delta variant striking and becoming the dominant variant and having impacts across nations all around the world. In this city, it had an impact that had not yet been seen in relation to COVID-19 and caused a prolonged lockdown here in Canberra, as it did across Sydney and Melbourne. That had particular repercussions for many of the people upon whom we rely, uh, the people who run and operate this parliament across parliamentary services, uh, the people uh, in Comcar, in all of the parliamentary departments and other departments of state uh, across uh, Canberra, uh, who had to keep the wheels of government and the wheels of parliament turning, uh, notwithstanding uh, the dramatically changed circumstances in which they worked and cer changed circumstances that become ever more challenging as you deal with both the personal and the professional challenges uh, of COVID, of lockdowns, of restrictions, of uh, working from home, whilst also in case of places like this uh, needing to uh, facilitate at least physical presence as well. So I do uh, pay enormous tribute uh, to uh, all those across the parliament, particularly from this chamber in the Department of the Senate, uh, the clerk and his team, uh, all of those in DPS uh, and the other services of the parliament uh, who have had to respond as they did last year, but with even perhaps greater challenges this year to ensure uh, that the oddities of remote participation, uh, that the safety uh, and conduct of the Senate could continue and that we could deliver the type of certainty that uh, Australians expect. They've done that, of course, Mr President, alongside some changes in leadership as well, uh, a new president and a new speaker. Again, I congratulate you and thank you for the manner in which you have assumed this office, uh, as I thank uh, your predecessor, Senator Ryan, former Senator Ryan, who it was such a delight to be able to see once more this morning uh, and whose service to this parliament uh, we continue to salute, and particularly his service to this chamber as its presiding officer. This place works based on cooperation, convention, uh, and the ability to be able to put our differences aside when required. And I thank uh, my opposite number, uh, Senator Wong, uh, and her leadership team and, uh, and colleagues, as I do Senator Waters, uh, uh, Senator Hanson, uh, and all of those across the crossbench uh, for the fact that uh, we all have to find means to be able to engage from time to time 
uh, to get things done, to cooperate and to put aside those differences. Uh, we've seen challenges in terms of conduct in this place, uh, and, and that is something, again, uh, that all need to reflect upon uh, and to make sure that if there is a pledge people can make for 2022, it is uh, to enter uh, this parliament and this chamber in particular uh, with the fiercest and strongest of arguments for the battle of ideas, not with the personal derogations or sledges uh, that undermine those arguments. I, Mr President, as you well know, am blessed with a fantastic team uh, that support me. Uh, my deputy leader, Senator Cash, uh, our manager uh, of business, and Senator Rustin, uh, her deputy manager of business and Senator Dunningham, the leader of the Nationals in, uh, in Senator uh, McKenzie, um, uh, our chief government whip in Senator Smith and, uh, and his uh, long-standing deputy now in Senator McGrath, um, newer deputy replacing you, Mr President, um, in Senator Chandler, and the Nationals whip uh, in Senator Davey. Uh, you, uh, you all help to make sure uh, that in this place I can have confidence uh, that uh, the government's agenda is being pursued, uh, interests upheld, um, and that uh, the team is working as it should uh, without the need for me to be here breathing down everybody's neck any minute or every second of the day. So I thank you all very much for that and for the confidence that I can have in what you do, and you should all be very proud of uh, what we have managed to achieve. We are each, we are each blessed with uh, some wonderful staff who help us to get the job done. Uh, and I thank all of the staff of every senator, uh, but I do uh, single mine out uh, just a little more. Uh, I want to thank my chief of staff, Rachel Thompson, who has been with me uh, from the moment that I was appointed uh, a minister back in 2015 as my chief of staff through a number of portfolios uh, and does an incredible job leading not just my team, uh, but providing incredible support to so many. Um, I do also single out uh, Loretta Sist in my office, who has been with me from day one as a senator 14 and a half years ago, um, and in particular uh, her work, especially while I held the Special Minister of State portfolio uh, through some very challenging times in supporting other staff across this building was so essential. Uh, but I can, uh, I can see the, the two guys sitting in the advisor box in uh, uh, Mams and Jono, well known around this chamber, who are incredibly important for the operation of the chamber, as are all of my team and I know all of your teams, uh, and we owe our staff uh, that support and respect. Mr President, uh, next year uh, will be an election year, and, uh, and of course uh, we will go into battle in our great democracy uh, to see which sides of this chamber we come back to sit upon. Uh, we are fortunate to live in a country where that battle will be done and had peacefully, where Australians will have their say uh, at the ballot box uh, in a manner uh, where ultimately we can, will and must all have confidence in the result. We saw uh, in the last 12 months what happens when people undermine aspects of that democracy, uh, and we need to make sure that we speak uh, as one. Uh, as democratically elected officials with that confidence in our democratic processes uh, as we head to that election. As we all prepare for it, I wish everybody across the chamber uh, all the best, not so much for the election, um, uh, but of course all the best in, uh, in the rest of your preparations and uh, particularly encourage everybody outside of the coalition to take a very long and restful break <laughs> over the Christmas and New Year period. Everyone has earned and needs a break during this time. I do, Senator Wong, as I'm, I'm watching you now, I hope that next year when we can come back, COVID-19 can enable us to take down the perspex, have people back in their normal seats and go back to having glasses of water, which I'm sure are more environmentally friendly than these bottles. And I too have had many bottles where I keep twisting the lid and it just doesn't open. <laughs> um, uh, so, which can be very frustrating at times. But seriously, uh, to all, uh, to all who celebrate the spirit of Christmas, a very, very merry Christmas. Uh, to all across the chamber, uh, please take the time to be with your loved ones. We sacrifice an enormous amount in these jobs, uh, as do many in our teams, to be away 
from our loved ones, for those who have had long periods of quarantine during the course of, uh, of these sittings and so on. It's been an added strain on those loved ones. Take that time and have a very happy new year. And I look forward to seeing you all back for battle in the most respectful of ways in 2022. Senator Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I'm glad to have the chance to place some, some remarks on the record as we end this parliamentary year. And it has been a hard year. It's been a hard year for the country, a disruptive year for the country. Pandemic lockdowns, separation from family, insecurity of employment and in business, some of the jagged features of the year we've had. And it's also been a hard year and a disruptive year for this chamber and everybody in it and everybody who supports all the people who are in it. Uh, um, isolation of lockdowns, extended periods of quarantine. Uh, I think it's you know, certainly been a year uh, that I'm quite happy to move on from, and I think I, most, I think everybody else would agree that, with that. Uh, I will start by saying that leading this Senate Labor caucus is a, an enormous privilege uh, and something for which I'm, I'm deeply grateful. And, uh, I'm very proud of my team, of our team, uh, and the unity of purpose that we demonstrate. And I'm pleased to put on um, the record uh, on behalf of my team. Uh, greetings of the season and, and thanks. So it's a few thank yous. Firstly, acknowledge you, Mr. President. I think you said 12 months ago, I didn't think I'd be addressing a new president at this time. I think you said that yourself, uh, that you. Um, uh, didn't expect to be in this role, uh, and I will do wish you well in this important role. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I look forward to our continued engagement across the, through the perspex. Um, my thanks, particularly to the deputy president, chair of committee, Senator, Senator Lyons. She is uh, on to her third president. <laughs> <laughs> See, she, she's no, demonstrating. Just <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I'm just not making any comment on it. Um, and uh, she does an, a fantastic job. Um, I, I, I said this to her privately, and I'm happy to say to this, say it publicly. Uh, Sue hasn't missed a, a sitting, I don't think. Um, notwithstanding being from WA, with all of the quarantine that we know that brings, that's a big effort. It's a big effort, and I really thank her for it. Um, to Simon, um, I've always enjoyed a cooperative working relationship with you. Uh, I agree with you. Sometimes people uh, don't get this, but actually having a strong working relationship, if not always agreement um, across parties, is actually vital to the democracy. Um, I sometimes think he's got a hard job. He's got a lot of opposition in front of him, a little bit behind him at times. <laughs> I don't know if he misses Matthias more than I do or less. <laughs> I do want to say one thing, though. You know, Senator Birmingham's partner uh, is obviously he's, he's, he's part of a political power couple in our state with um, his partner, his wife, serving as the chief of staff for the premier. You can tell by the fact that we've spent so much time in quarantine, he actually has not managed to get any favours for either of us as a result. We sometimes he could have done so. Um, I do want to, if people would. Um, uh, allow me. I want to pay particular tribute to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition in the Senate, Senator Keneally. Um, this may or may not be the last time we get to be together in this chamber, depending on whether or not Mr Morrison goes a bit early. Uh, I want to say in this place that Christina has been an outstanding deputy. Uh, I have been able to count on her every single day. Uh, she is a rare talent. She's fearsome and courageous, and she strengthened our team immeasurably. Uh, I am sad to lose her from the Senate, but I know she will be a formidable representative for the people of Fowler, and I wish her the very best. I haven't been able to guilt her into staying. So a second best, I'm, I hope she makes a long and successful contribution in the House of Representatives, and I thank her for her friendship. I also thank, as always, my dear friend and colleague, Senator Gallagher, our manager. This is the finest group of women I've, I've worked with. Um, uh, this has been a particular feat of endurance this year for Katie Gallagher, uh, not only chair of the COVID committee and all the work she does here, but uh, in the midst of all of this, the way in which the COVID-19 pandemic became real for her and her family. And she demonstrated through that the, the character that she has. Put simply, Katie's just a great human being. It's great to work with you. To uh, the opposition whips and deputy whip, whip and deputy whips, to Senator Urquhart, to um, Senator Ciccone, 
um, and Senator McCarthy. Uh, you know, Whipping is the centre of chamber management, and uh, I really want to thank you and your staff for all their work. This has been an even tougher year with all the travel and pairing and uh, remote participation, uh, and you know, you've done a great job, and thank you all uh, for your work. And I know that um, opposition senators are really uh, grateful uh, for your work. Um, I thank all of my team for the commitment to advancing the Labor cause in the Senate this year. We don't win all of the time, but I always reckon we outperform our numerical position. Um, it's going to be a tough few months, but we hope to be on that side by, this, by the time I'm giving these remarks next year. Um, uh, just a few thanks to the people who support us to be here. First to uh, the clerk, uh, Richard Pye, the deputy clerk, and all those, the whole Senate team, uh, the, st the staff of the Department of the Senate. Thank you for all of your work for what is, I think, such an important institution of the democracy. Um, particular thanks to the chamber attendants uh, who um, uh, really keep this place ticking along. Uh, and I particularly acknowledge the service of Adrienne Morrison, who, as the President of the Chamber acknowledged this morning, is retiring after 15 years. Um, thanks to the Secretary and staff of DPS, um, particular thanks to the cleaners, uh, who you know, uh, often uh, are, are not recognised sufficiently um, and without whose service this place wouldn't run. Uh, to Comcar, to all of those, in, uh, to the parliamentary security team, AFP, um, thank you for all the work you do um, uh, to keep the parliament uh, operating safely. I do want to particularly express thanks for the efforts of all opposition staff. Staff do have a unique role in the jobs we, we undertake. Uh, as you know, contributors and to and witnesses to some of the most consequential decision-making uh, for the nation. Uh, they serve us professionally, they serve us tirelessly, and as have we have heard this week, this workplace has not always been the model we would hope it to be and that the Australian people expect it to be, for, for which we must all collectively work to improve. Political staff make significant personal sacrifices to serve us. They make those sacrifices without complaint or resentment especially in a year, this year, where many of them have spent extended periods of many weeks in Canberra due to border restrictions. So I say to all of them, we are grateful. To all senators, it's been a, uh, a year where I think there has been a lot of passion and emotion uh, expressed. Uh, as I've said many times in this place, this is where conflict is engaged in. Uh, and we all work to contain that conflict, sometimes successfully. Well, I hope we can all work to contain that, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But whatever differences we have, we all have people whom we love and cherish. So my hope for you is that in this time ahead, that everyone here can reconnect with those you love and replenish this most important part of our lives. And finally, to Labor members and supporters throughout Australia, including the Labor movement, on behalf of the Senate Labor team, I extend our gratitude and hope that the holiday season is a happy and safe one. May Father Christmas deliver on 25th September, and may we and the country deliver at the election in 2022. And we, we know with your support we will. Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's not fight about it. Senator McKenzie, no, it's you the spirit the of the season, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Senator Waters. Um, this has been our decade year, so it's um, great to still be in the chamber. Um, I think the the tone of today's um, contribution sort of really reflects the year that our country and our um, our chamber has been through. So. Like uh, Senator Wong, I'll be very, very glad to see the back of 2021. <laughs> and I think our country is with us in echoing um, those sentiments. Um, I want to say thank you to our staff too and the families of the senators that I'm very, very proud to lead. Um, they work very, very hard, um, often in trying circumstances, and it has been a challenging year, I think, for our staff. And, um, want to say thank, a huge thank you to them. 
Um, for the National Party Senate team, we're very, very proud of what we've been able to achieve this year, uh, fighting for forestry, competition law, labelling laws, two seats saved in the Northern Territory, um, ensuring Australia Post continues to carry um, firearms legally, uh, having a serious and considered uh, debate on water policy, uh, ensuring that local content is protected uh, in our film industry, and from the AWI to the ABC, making sure that those government entities um, which service our nation, but particularly for us in the region, as we are um, never going to be uh, able to access these services as a result of um, commercial operations, to be able to come to this place and hold them um, to account is, is very, very important. I've been very, very privileged as Leader of the Nationals to work with a new Senate leader, Simon Birmingham and his team. And thanks to the respect and communication we've developed not only between ourselves but between our staff, uh, we've been able to manage some very, very challenging periods and issues over this year. So I want to say a huge thank you to both your staff um, and also to the people, um, to, to you as individuals. Uh, we, as a coalition, serve a very broad group of people in the Australian public. Uh, we've been sent here to serve them, and thanks to the way we handle our relationship as the two parties of government, means we uh, really can achieve the best for them. Um, I'm privileged to um, serve and lead very courageous, principled and um, passionate National Party senators. Um, who often have different views to each other, let alone uh, to many in this chamber. And the way they can respectfully um, have those conversations in this chamber, I, re I think, really reflects what is unique about where and how we serve. Um, the five people that I lead are also very proud of who they are and where they come from, and I think their voice is unique in this um, parliament. And I'm so proud to be part of a democracy that allows that. Um, minority voice to be heard. Um, I don't think uh, COVID wasn't the only challenge that APH has experienced this year. Um, and proud again to be part of a generation of parliamentarians across the divide that are going to see change in our workplace um, because of the decisions we as individual senators and members will make um, as a result of, of what has occurred and been disclosed throughout this year. So. Um, not shirking that responsibility, I'm, I, I, we're going to get there. We're the generation of change that's going to make this happen. So um, that, that's going to be a good story. Um, people have thanked the gardeners, the Comcars, attendants. Thank you, um, particularly for carrying all my folders in um, <laughs> of, of recent months. But also the gardeners. I walk in every day, and it is such a blessing to. Um, walk through such magnificent gardens here in APH. And I find, given we're inside all the time, um, those moments where we can run between courtyards for votes, etc., and, and feel the natural environment, I think is important. This is our home away from home, and all the staff at APH, whether they're at Aussies um, or the, our security guys or, or Comcar boys, um, and I'm saying that because they are actual both men, um, Lindsay and Andrew. Um, take care of us. And uh, I think it is people say it's a boarding school. I think it's actually more of a home. Um, I'd like to also thank my Chief of Staff, Liz, Liz Dowd, who actually leads an incredible team of um, professional, passionate people in my office. And I'd like to thank my Deputy Leader, Maddie Canavan, and Parent Davy. It's no easy task being the whip of the National Party in the Senate, can I tell you. Um, and she does it with aplomb class and uh, strength, which is amazing. Um, I wish everyone in this chamber and more broadly across our country a very COVID-safe Christmas and recognise that this, for many, is the first time you may have seen loved ones for years, and not because they're overseas, because they're actually here, just happen to be in the wrong state. So I hope you get to hold them, laugh with them, share with them. I wish you all a very peaceful, loving, joyful Christmas and uh, look forward to punching on next year. Senator Waters. Thank you, President. Well, reflecting on my remarks from last year, I thought 2020 was a bin fire and 2021 has trumped it. We need a bigger bin for it to get in. 
Um, another tumultuous year for our country um, and for the world. On behalf of the Australian Greens, I express the love and support to all Australians who have suffered this year. I would like to uh, commend all of the remarks that have been made, associate myself with them and also start by thanking the staff in this building um, and who work um, in electorate offices for us. They are the backbone of how we can do our work and it's absolutely critical that we make sure that this is a safe workplace for them um, that they can be proud of and continue to want to work in. It has been a year of reckoning with the brave disclosures of women like Brittany Higgins and Rochelle Miller being the catalyst for so many other stories told. The Set the Standard report released this week is a line in the sand that we cannot turn away from. We must seize the opportunity to make this place better and to actually set that standard that the community demands and live up to it. I look forward to working with everyone in this place to implement the Jenkins recommendations in full. Um, to the formalities here in Parliament, we've caused farewell to former President Scott Ryan, and I want to place on record our thanks for the work that he did keeping the chamber functioning during the pandemic. Um, we also, of course, welcome the new president to the role, and I think he's well and truly been initiated in these last few weeks. And let's hope. Uh, anyway. Let's hope that everything's different next year and that everybody's happy and well. I want to uh, extend the Greens' thanks to the clerk, Richard Pye, to, of course, uh, the deputy clerk, Jackie Morris, to everyone at the tables office and the procedure uh, office, to those in the drafting office. Thank you for working so hard for us Greens and for us all, to the Senate staff, the wonderful attendants, and, of course, um, Adrian, who's retiring after so many years in this place. Uh, thank you for all of the water, and I, too, look forward to the, just the normal glasses again in future. Uh, I want to thank the Parliamentary Budget Office in a re-election year. We've kept them very busy, as I'm sure you all have also, um, to the Parliamentary Library staff who do excellent research work and always answer our tricky questions, to the Comcar drivers, the security guards, the baristas, the cleaners, the early childhood educators, the chefs at the trough, the gardeners as well, to the Department of Parliamentary Services staff for all of the service that you give us morning, noon and night. Thank you to the IT teams for keeping democracy functioning in a pandemic, um, particularly during the innumerable sittings and meetings and estimates and committee hearings. Um, I only had to hold up a note once saying that I couldn't hear, and that's not a bad record. Remote parliament has provided some important flexibility, which I think we could all um, hopefully carry forward, and it's also helped to personalise the experience in some ways, as pets and kids and all sorts of things popped up in the background. No one was a cat, so I guess we can call that a win. Um, I hope that this parliament can use the success of the past 18 months to start looking at ways to encourage greater participation uh, and the diverse representation that remote parliament could provide. Uh, to all my colleagues in this place, thank you for your commitment to trying to make the world a better place, even though we disagree on how that should happen. I acknowledge your commitment in performing these roles. It is not easy on us or our families. Thank you for doing it. Thank you to all of the citizens in our electorate who contact us with stories. It's critical that we remain connected with uh, the community and the people that we represent. To my wonderful staff, I'm eternally grateful to their, for their support. Um, to all of my Greens Senate team, amazing, dedicated people, clearly not here because they're already on their way home after an enormous year that they have all worked so hard on. Um, acknowledge, of course, that this year we farewell to the indefatigable Rachel Sewitt, whom we dearly miss. Um, we know she's very happy in her, her new role, but the place is, is very different without her. Of course, in her stead, we have the wonderful Dorinda Cox, who's already made such an impact. Um, and we, it's a testimony to what she brings to this place that we have an inquiry already into missing and murdered First Nations women. Um, Rach, of course, left the task of whip open, so acknowledge uh, Senator McKim has taken on that, uh, that task, and uh, I suspect he's regretting that decision. However, it's too late now. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to getting home to my kids, as I'm sure we all are. Please look after yourselves over the holiday break and uh, see you all next year. I just, if there's nobody else, I just wish to add a few personal reflections uh, on the year that's been. It has been a strange year. Uh, many weeks spent away from family and friends. Uh, far too many weeks in uh, in lockdown. But um, during that time, when I've been in Canberra, I've been reading Lord of the Rings to Jonathan, Eleanor, and Felicity. Uh, chosen not just for its length, 
Uh, we commenced this long journey with Frodo in May and we're only about halfway through. Uh, it has been one of my favourite books uh, carried through from my youth to adulthood. I tell you this to explain why, as we close this very strange parliamentary year, uh, a quote from that most excellent of hobbits, Bilbo Baggins, came to mind. I know half of you half as well as I should like, and like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. <laughs> now, as you puzzle that out, as have Proudfoots, and as did I when I was a young boy reading the book, I will assure you it is praise, uh, but it is praise with a dose of humility. Taking the time to connect with our colleagues is never time poorly spent. As we all know, connections across the chamber are valuable and productive. To display civility in the face of fundamental ideological difference is the exemplar of our democracy, uh, and particularly of this chamber, of the Senate. It is the reason I honour this place, and it is the reason that I believe the role I fill uh, is such an important one. As I take time to reflect this summer, one of the things I'll be reflecting on is how I can, in this busiest of workplaces, assist the Senate to more strongly embrace this civility. Now, I have more people to thank than in previous years. Uh, very quickly, to Richard and his team in the clerk's office, uh, John and team in the Black Rod's office, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, I'm sure the change of presiding officers is viewed with some trepidation, uh, but I very much appreciate all the advice and support I have received. Uh, the chamber attendants have been thanked so much. You deserve it. Uh, thank you. But the whole staff of the Department of the Senate, who looked after us through these difficult COVID times, uh, we all thank you so much. Uh, to Rob, Kate, uh, and all the staff of the Department of Parliamentary Services, cleaning, IT, uh, catering, security staff, gardeners, Senator McKenzie, uh, I mean, they do a remarkable job looking after us and looking after our democracy. Uh, to all our staff, uh, you all do a remarkable job and I hope you all get to enjoy a break. To my staff, I cannot thank you enough. To my team in Perth, Grace, Sonia, Riley, Neve, Catherine and Lewis, I assure you that I will actually be out of quarantine and back in the office at some point. Uh, to my new team of Vincent, Duncan, Fiona and Shireen, thank you for supporting me in my new role so well. To Sue Lyons, uh, Deputy President of the Senate, thank you for your assistance over the past weeks. As I took up the role of President, uh, you have been an enormous support to me. Uh, I also wish to acknowledge uh, Scott Ryan and Tony Smith, uh, both assisted me enormously in recent months, uh, and I hope and I'm sure that no matter what their futures hold, they will almost certainly be slightly calmer than that of the role of uh, presiding officer. Uh, finally to you, my colleagues, Senator Birmingham, Senator Wong, uh, to everyone in the chamber and to those who couldn't be here. Um, there are those who I know in this place deeply, whose friendship, counsel and support I greatly cherish. And there are some who have recently arrived in, to this place. To one and all, I offer my thanks, my sincere hope for a safe, peaceful and blessed Christmas to you all. And I'm sure we all look forward to stepping into our own homes and saying, well, I'm back. And yes, that is another Lord of the Rings reference. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, the president will receive a letter requesting a the president has received a letter requesting a change of membership of committees. Minister. Uh, motion to vary the membership of committees. Uh, is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Minister. I move that senators be discharged from and appointed to committees as set out in the list available in the chamber. Uh, though uh, the question, I'll put that question. Those in favour say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The Senate stands adjourned and will meet again on Tuesday, the 8th of February 2022 at 12 noon.